Children Making Strides started out of a growing need to provide more people with autism services on Cape Cod. The further from Boston you lived, the more difficult it was to get services for your child. The company has seen tremendous growth and positive results. They have now expanded to a new Plymouth location to help serve the growing population. PCN met up with the group to hear about their history and to gain an understanding of just how much more we know about autism today than we did 20 years ago. My second child, Matthew, uh, was born and was very typically developing. And then around his, a little after his second birthday, he had a seizure and actually stopped talking pretty much in the middle of a sentence. And we went to the doctor on the Cape and wonderful man, but he honestly thought he was a voluntary mute. And finally, out of frustration, he said, you really should go to Boston. And within 15 minutes, they said, your son has autism which I never knew much about. And from there, we started a journey of trying to get him help. And then Pat had heard about me, and it's a very small community back then of moms, and she gave me a call, and we became friendly. And then about 10 years later, she asked me to come to work for her, and I've been here ever since. The director of our company, Pat Antonellis, was a single mom about 19 years ago when she noticed delays in her son and got some services but noticed that there was a need for much more and so she started the company to bring services and help families uh, to get help for their children. So years ago when my son was diagnosed autism there were a few different branches of the diagnosis so technically my son had what was called PDD-NOS which is pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified those diagnoses have now taken over and it's a spectrum disorder called ASD. So most children we see now come through with an ASD diagnosis, autism spectrum disorder. Some are very mild and have very few needs. Some are very severe and have very extreme, time-consuming, intense needs. So the medical community changed the way that children are diagnosed, but the needs really haven't changed. They still need very intense services. So the hope going forward, and obviously in the media, you do see more and more people with autism um, in the forefront. So I think exposure to the general public is very, very important. Uh, a lot of our children, all of our children, they don't have any distinguishing features. So sometimes families feel very judged if they'll go to the grocery store and the child will throw a tantrum, for example. Our tantrum may last 45 minutes. So they feel that people are looking at them and they're bad parents. And none of that is really true. You really have to get the support and I think get the public to realize that these children do have neurological disorders. They're not being bad children. Uh, their parents are very loving and nurturing and doing the best they can. And it's a stressful situation for a lot of our parents. And really obviously doesn't come with any guidebook. So getting help and support is paramount you know, we all work at telling parents what's out there because there are a lot of supports out there, but many don't know about it. And when I talk to parents about the different things they can apply for and supports in the community, a light bulb goes off and you feel this sense of, thank God someone's going to understand me. So really go on the internet. Sometimes it's a blessing and a curse, but there are so many organizations that are really there to help. and grants for, for different things you may need, and parents just information is the most important part. I've never seen a child not make progress with services, it's just getting them those services.